Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today, with it being the start of a new year, I thought I'd try out a new art supply to me, and that is the Golden Open Acrylic Paints that I showed along with some new brushes and canvas panels in my last art haul video. I bought both the traditional set, which you can see here, as well as the modern set, but we'll mainly be using the traditional set today, with the addition of Hansa Yellow Opaque from the modern set. I was interested to see what differences using these slow drying acrylic paints made to my painting process, and I'll be demonstrating this with this Golden Eagle painting. I'll also be talking about the properties of these paints and give you my opinions as to the pros and cons of using open acrylics compared with regular acrylics, so I hope you enjoy the video and find it helpful. All the supplies I've used will be listed in the description box, along with a reference photo from Pixabay if you're interested or want to try this one out for yourself. Now one thing I did really like about these paints right from the start was the hand painted colour swatch on each of the tubes. Each swatch is painted over three black lines, so you can not only get an accurate idea of what colour the paint is inside, but also see how transparent or opaque it is, which I think is really useful. I don't paint with acrylics a lot, but I've found that often the colour on the tube is very different to the paint inside, which can be really frustrating. I was eager to get started, but because the canvas panels I bought weren't primed, I first had to prep my surface, and so painted on a couple of layers of gesso mixed with some regular acrylic paint in the colour yellow ochre. You can skip this part of the video if you want, but I thought I'd include it for those of you who want to see my whole process. I added the yellow ochre to tone my canvas, which when painting in acrylic or oils can help you judge your values more accurately as you can paint over with white rather than having to preserve the white of the paper like you do in watercolour. I used a size 14 flat brush from the Winsor & Newton foundation set, which was really nice to use, and I let the first layer dry completely before painting on the second layer. Then I sketched out my eagle onto tracing paper and used the reverse transfer method to transfer my outline onto my dry canvas. You can draw directly onto your canvas if you prefer, as any unwanted lines can be covered over with acrylic paint. I just felt more comfortable doing it this way, and this is a technique I use a lot in my watercolour paintings. With that all done, I put out a blob of each of the six colours from the traditional set onto a tear-off palette, and added a blob of the Hansa Yellow Opaque from the modern set to use for the eagle's beak. The paint has a really nice smooth consistency coming out of the tube, which seems less viscous than other acrylics I've tried, and makes for easier mixing, so I spent a few minutes trying out different colour mixes before I started. I tried mixing the Van Dyke Brown with the Indian Yellow Hue, and added in some Alizarin Crimson Hue. I also mixed some of the Ultramarine Blue with the Van Dyke Brown to create a really dark blue-black to use on the darkest parts of the eagle's feathers. I'm using my flat synthetic brushes again, but Golden does state that these open acrylics are flexible enough to be used even with natural fibre brushes, but that's still something I feel a bit nervous about, so let me know if you've tried this out yourself. So having got a bit of a feel for these acrylic paints, I began by blocking out some of the main colours and shapes on the eagle's head and face. And as someone who tends to paint quite slowly, especially when it comes to acrylics, which I'm still not completely confident with, it was really nice not to have to worry about the paints drying out so quickly. When I've painted with regular acrylics before, I've been really conscious of the paints drying out before I've finished with them, and despite trying to keep them open by spritzing them with water, using a stay dry palette, and even adding in slow dry mediums, they would still skin over. And once that's happened, you have to squeeze out and mix more fresh paint, which can be wasteful if you don't judge your timing or your paint quantities right. With these open acrylics though, you can relax and enjoy the painting process more without having to worry. As you can see, I just squeezed these paints onto a tear-off palette, so I think they'd be really good if you are a beginner in acrylics or like me, you paint a bit more slowly, or maybe even have to split up your painting sessions throughout the day. I started painting the seagull in the morning, and the paint blobs were still open when I got to finishing it off in the early evening. Obviously the paint dried more quickly on areas of the palette where they were thinner or spread out, but for me it's a real game changer. It also means that there is less wasted paint, which is great as paint is expensive. 
Golden also states that you can extend or thin these paints further by using other open mediums with them, or thinner, although I didn't try that out today as I really didn't need to. And as with regular acrylics at least, I've found that adding some mediums can change the opacity and consistency of the paint, and I didn't want to risk that unnecessarily today. Like with regular acrylics though, you can thin out the paint just with a bit of water, if you perhaps want to help it flow in smaller or more detailed areas, like I did with the eagle's eye here. So along with having more time before your paints skin over or dry out, the properties and slow drying formula of golden open acrylics also allow super smooth blending and softening. I was able to subtly mix in green, blue and orange hues into the feathers on the eagle's head, which helped to make the brown feathers look more varied and interesting without them being too obvious. I was also able to create smooth colour transitions on the bird's beak here, with very little effort, just by very gently and softly blending the colours together. That was always something I struggled with when painting with regular acrylics, as I just needed more time before the paint started to dry. So this is a real advantage for the style of painting and the type of realistic and natural effects I like to achieve in my animal paintings. I also think it would be a real advantage on larger paintings too, and where you might want to create smooth transitions, like say if you were painting a sunset or a stormy sky for example. On this eagle, the great blending capability and slow drying time also meant that I could build up the rest of the eagle's face and neck feathers in layers and blend as I go, rather than having to wait for one layer to dry completely before adding the next, as I did with my regular acrylics. So this actually saved me time, and I was quite surprised at how quickly this part of the painting came together. It was also really fun to do, and being able to blend the colours together softly for longer prevented me from getting bogged down with individual feather details here, and it allowed me to concentrate more on my colour values, so encouraging a bit more of a looser style for the feathers, which I really liked. I started off by marking out where the white feathers were on the face, and then used some quick light brush strokes to mark out the length and direction of the feather sections around the eye and face. From there I gradually built up layers of paint, adding in Indian yellow, Van Dyke brown and then mixing in alizarin crimson and blue to create some really dark reds and browns. I was also able to add and blend lighter colours over darker ones, which is something you can do with regular acrylics, but because my darker layers were still open, I was able to create soft creamy browns and oranges really easily, just by mixing in some white. I continued this layering process to build depth into my painting and used the reference photo more as a guide for feather length and direction as well as colour value, rather than to copy it exactly. I then moved my attentions back to the eye, and here I wanted to glaze over some darker orange over the top part of the iris that's in shadow. But here I had a bit of a problem, since the first layer of orange paint still hadn't dried. So adding my more watered down paint mix just reactivated the paint and mixed with it, rather than acting as a glaze over the top of it. So this is where the slower drying time could be seen as a bit of a disadvantage if you're someone who likes to paint with glazes, as you'd need to make sure the underneath layer was dry before painting the glaze over the top. This could also be a problem if you want to add crisp white details to your painting for example, without it mixing with colours underneath. Again, you'd have to make sure the underneath layers were dry first. I didn't find it a huge problem, but it is something just to be aware of. For the details on the eagle's face, I switched down to a small round paintbrush. And despite it being several hours later by this point, I was still using the same blobs of paint that I'd squeezed out at the start. I really enjoyed putting in all these little details as it really helped bring this eagle to life. I added some individual fine feathers around the eye and beak, using the grey-black colour I'd mixed from the Van Dyke Brown and Ultramarine Blue. 
I also painted on some white highlights around the beak and nostril and added some of the fine dark brown feathers under his beak or chin. With that completely dry, helped along with my hairdryer, there was one last thing I wanted to try out with these paints. And that's to see how they mixed with my regular acrylic paints and how that affected the drying time. I decided to test this out by mixing a grey gradient for the background, using some of my black Liquitex acrylic with the white golden open acrylic in this set. Being able to mix these open acrylics with whatever other acrylics you may have means that you won't need to splash out on a whole new set of paints to take advantage of a slower drying time. The drying time will be slightly reduced as you might expect, but this will depend both on the proportions of your mix as well of course as the temperature of your environment. Here in the UK it's pretty cold right now so paints tend to dry more slowly anyway. With my background, the two brands mixed together really well, and the slower drying time allowed me to get a smooth, even gradient. So I would say if you want to try them out, you could just buy a few colours to start with and experiment with mixing with your regular acrylics. You don't need to buy the whole set of 81 colours, even if you could afford it. I definitely have enough colours to be getting on with with these two sets, but I might buy a black to mix some darker shades with. We'll see. So as you've probably guessed, I really like these paints. I don't know what's in them to make them behave the way they do, but they are professional quality and they do seem to live up to their claims. They do remain wet for longer and this does give you a lot more flexibility to explore different techniques where regular acrylics are normally challenging. You can also mix them with your normal acrylics or like I'm doing here, use them alongside your regular acrylics. Here I mixed black together with raw umber to paint in some more details and finishing touches. Now that said, when the painting had dried, I decided I'd liked it better with the softer orange background, as I thought it brought out the colour in the eagle's eye and some of those golden feathers. I also liked the contrast of the matte background with the slightly glossy finish on the eagle, so I simply painted over the background again. Luckily I had reserved my leftover paint in a lidded container and I'm much happier with the finished result. Let me know which background you prefer. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed painting this one. Give it a thumbs up if you did and comment below with any questions or thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, take care, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!